Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. The Court of Appeal has upheld a ban on Premier Christian Radio broadcasting a 30-second ad on Christian marginalisation. In his ruling, Lord Dyson said the ad broke broadcasting law as it was directed to the political end of making a fairer society. The ad asked listeners for information on whether Christians had been sidelined at work in order to help make a fairer society. But the Radio Advertising Clearance Centre stopped it, claiming that it was directed to a political end. Peter Kerridge, head of Premier Radio, reacted by placing a full-page spread in the Daily Telegraph, describing the ruling as a very bad day for free speech. Christians have been banned from giving their opinion. You could be next, declared the headline. Mr Kerridge says there is no good reason for the Court of Appeal to uphold the ban and is considering further legal options. He added, the public interest cannot be best served by preventing people from gaining information and we believe that such a ban represents an attack on freedom of speech for everyone. The Scottish Parliament has this week voted to press ahead with the introduction of gay marriage after MSPs had their first chance to debate and vote on the issue. The Marriage and Civil Partnership Bill passed the first of three parliamentary hurdles by 98 votes to 15, with the legislation now moving on to committee stage. John Mason, who opposes the bill, told MSPs that religious people are feeling increasingly marginalised and that Parliament's backing for same-sex marriage is simply out of line with public opinion. I think there are two main arguments against this bill. One, on the principle that marriage is between a man and a woman. And secondly, whether there are adequate safeguards in place for those who disagree. The latter is a concern which comes on top of the feeling of some religious people that they are being increasingly marginalised in society. Parliament is not reflecting public opinion on this issue. It can be argued whether those supporting or opposing the bill have the greater numbers on their side, but there is certainly not the overwhelming support outside this place that there seems to be inside. That view has been echoed by campaign group Scotland for Marriage, who said the majority of Scots just don't support this bill. Real safeguards need to be added to protect the rights, civil liberties and freedom of speech of those who disagree. But Health Secretary Alex Neil says the legislation promotes equality and will allow all couples who love each other to have their marriage recognised in law. It introduces same-sex marriage, which will further promote equality and diversity in our society, while respecting the views of those who do not wish to take part. I believe the provisions of this bill will improve our society that we live in here in Scotland. Staying in Scotland, and a number of schools are holding drop-in sex clinics for pupils as young as 13. Students in Lothian and Dumfries and Galloway can access tests for chlamydia and gonorrhea during the after-school and lunchtime sessions. And a Scottish Government spokesman said the initiative is set to spread. NHS boards and local authorities are expected to ensure young people's sexual health drop-in services are available within or near every school in Scotland. But pro-family campaigners say the service makes the issue of underage sex worse rather than better. Norman Wells, director of the Family Education Trust, said clinics that offer confidential sexual health services to children under the age of consent are part of the problem, not the solution. Parents are being kept in the dark. Conservative MP David Burrows has said that the recent gender abortion scandal shows the practice is open to dishonesty, illegality and abuse and called on Parliament to stop turning a blind eye on the issue. In September, the Crown Prosecution Service chose not to prosecute two doctors who approved abortions because of a baby's sex following an undercover investigation by the Daily Telegraph. Mr Burroughs says that decision gives a green light to abortion on demand and goes against the intentions of the 1967 Abortion Act. He said, It seems that the responsibility for enforcing the law is being passed from the courts to doctors, thereby second-guessing the intentions of Parliament on enforcement. He added that it was time for Parliament to speak up for the voiceless, ensuring that we respect life. New planning laws brought in have eased the way for more betting shops to open on our high streets. The regulations include a measure allowing shops to switch use to become a bookmaker without any planning permission. 
Critics say it could result in town centres being overrun with clusters of betting shops and payday loan companies and will fuel problem gambling and increase crime. Responding to a complaint from Labrooks about some councils' attitudes towards bookmakers, Planning Minister Nick Bowles told the betting chain that the new rules will help them overcome council objections and revitalise high streets by cutting red tape. But Hilary Benn, the shadow local government minister, says he's concerned that the government was making it more difficult for communities to stop the proliferation of betting shops and undermining the powers used by councils to force applicants for planning permission to explain the social impact of their changes. A school in America has been threatened with legal action if it takes part in a Christmas shoebox appeal for disadvantaged children. The American Humanist Association contacted Skyview Academy in Denver asking them to drop out of Operation Christmas Child or face a lawsuit. The group argues that the school is violating rules about the separation of church and state by taking part in the programme. Operation Christmas Child, which is run by Christian organisation The Samaritan's Purse, sends the gift pack boxes along with a gospel message to needy children all around the world. Students and parents held a rally outside the school and say they will continue to collect gifts for the programme on public property near the school. Laurie Grove, the Academy's board president, said they were shocked and disappointed by the action, adding, It was hard to believe we were receiving a threatening letter based on the good intentions of our students. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.